this is a very interesting book I'm reading about. Um, this person is a deaf person, and he and his brother, fraternal twins, um, were born after another boy to both parents being deaf. And um, this class that I have been taking about exceptional um, learners has changed my life entirely. I've learned about ADHD, things that I didn't make sense before in my life when I was teaching in elementary schools in Japan. And um, this book has um, changed my mind about or widened my view about um, deaf people. I remember the first, my first account where I've like seeing ever um, deaf people was when um, when um, I was watching the news um, in Bulgaria as a kid and I noticed that the news that were before the big news at 8 p.m. with the ones that my mom my parents used to watch um, the one before that is somewhere in the, um, in the afternoon they um, had a, a person down in a little square um, who was doing the sign language in Bulgarian and I was like looking at that person, looking at that person, trying to understand what they were saying and um, they were using a lot of not only gestures with their hands and their fingers but also um, body, the whole body and um, posture and um, face, um, eyes, um, mouth, everything, Every, they were using their whole body to um, communicate and um, and that was news and I was like wow how the how cool is that, I thought that was really unique um, then I went on my mission um, on Temple Square in Salt Lake City and uh, we had every Sunday after the music and the spoken word um, we had lined a few sisters where the flag pool was it's not existing right now but um that's where our tours would start of the square and um we had a sign of our we had like a big black board that we will hold and it would say um our language and for me it was saying bulgarski like Bul bulgarian and for you know i could see that the mongolian people was the same alphabet like me and the Russian people is the same alphabet like me. And um, I could see other languages that I never knew, like Cambodian, like uh, Cantonese and uh, Mandarin. And it was just really cool. It was really cool. But one of those languages was ASL, which is American Sign Language. And there were a few sisters, quite a few actually, who knew that language and they would um, sign with their hands. Well, what I'm reading from this book really is interesting because the grandparents of this boy, when this guy, um, they didn't have a, a lot of um, experience with ASL. ASL was in the 1990s, um, kind of like established as a language in um, in the states, and before that, um, using ASL was kind of like. Um, looked down upon because uh, it was um, monkeys. Monkeys is that body language to, to um, communicate with each other and we're people. So um, you, even those who are with hearing impairments have to learn to speak with sound and to listen and to see. And so, the, so this boy is explaining how when he was little, he um, he would purposely uh, forget his earring, uh, hearing device devices at home. He would just hide them in his dresser and his clothes and his socks and his shoes and under his bed and his mattress so he doesn't have to use it at school because he didn't um, want to, because apparently if you put them on, you can hear. Even if you're a deaf person, completely deaf, you can hear, but uh, he didn't like the echoing of the e or like the the sounds of the classroom, the the noise of the classroom. He didn't like that. So and at home, his mom would, would sign, and so he was not. He struggled with um, 
his homeroom teacher wouldn't um, really sign well. He, she was on phone in ASL and they would um, be made to listen and to respond. And so he had a hard time. But when his grandma was uh, a kid, oh, that was a belittled that he cannot sign. But anyways, so I learned a lot of good things about like there are people that I've never communities. I mean societies that they they support each other. They 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 have neighborhoods. And then um, he moved away from uh, his mom. His mom. He how he writes about her is that she's his personal hero. I am so glad that there are men in this world who um, recognize them. The drive the moms have to go through um, difficulties and still be focused on their kids and um, strive to help them um, as much as they can develop their skills, talents, and interests. And so um, it's very interesting that um, his mom moved them from New York to um, Austin, Texas, and they, they had a nice community where everybody was signing, even... Um, some random lady and in the supermarket who was a cashier who could sign um, spell words in sign language so she made friends with her but um the, his mom had to deal with um, husband's addictions um, substance addictions alcohol and others and um, so he will he would be on and off the thing he says but uh, she was the constant and uh, he and she kind of like caught them on fire about learning and um, exploring the world and um, she believed in her kids and she stood up for them she was the advocate for them um, because she knew their disabilities because she had the same and uh, something interesting that really made me think as a whole is how we when we see somebody who is not like the norm the normal people speaking hearing um being able to walk and talk and run and jump and blah 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 when we see a person who is lacking that we're trying to as a humanity we're trying to create a device a thing or make them adjust to what is the norm and how he says it is we are fine with asl language at home or that's how we learn and they made us at school to be not ourselves and he's like how so it's like um an example i would give is like you speak at home spanish for example so because that's the majority and then they would um make you which was actually a real concern here too um at least in Utah, from what i learned that um Kids were not allowed to speak Spanish at school. They were not allowed to communicate in their mother's tongue um, at school and in public and just at home. And so nowadays it's different. Um, but um, it's the same with sign language just because it's a different language. And how it sounds is like he was explaining in the book, like the sentence is not grammatically like like how it sounds in English. So they have, they have to learn English as well. Um, for example, yeah, that's not a really good example, but, um, it would be like, mom, serious, we won't do that, or like, we stand, hold up, sign, how long? And so, so, it's like, it reminds me of German, the, the, the verb goes at the end of the sentence, or it's like, how it's broken up in the sentence, and it doesn't make sense in English, it's like, broken, kind of like English, but... But for them, it makes sense, and it has so vast um, vocabulary that they use um, and they sign, and it's really interesting. Um, it's 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 an eye opener. That book is an eye opener, and um, there are other people I naturally research who wrote books who are deaf or or blind or uh, any kind of impairment, but our instructor asked us to pick one so I did I picked this one and um, I actually asked the my kids to to read passage from it too and to tell me what they think about it and it was really great because when I learn something from school I want to share with my, with my kids and um, 
my professor told me today that really benefits the, the child, the children, because he said, um, that's what he said, okay, I, I didn't make it up. But he told me that um, when, the, when the children grow up in an um, atmosphere where the mom is um, um, perceiving another like, education, when, when the mom is doing something um, for her education, the children um, get... Um, it, it, it kind of like um, helps them um, and their focus on what they want to do, to do with their future. He said it's not it's not the father what his accomplishments are, it's the mom. And so um, I think, and from what I read from this guy, I guess the, um, the mom is the, um, kind of like the backbone of helping, helping and nurturing um, the interest of the children. And so what I learn at school, I make sure I share with them. And, you know, interesting facts about, like, I, when I, when I listen to my professors and what they say about, you know, disabilities and stuff, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I had that kid in my classroom in Japan. I remember having this, this attitude and this, um, 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 how they, how they care themselves the kids and, and I didn't know I, and so so what I'm learning now is how to adjust the lessons to people like that so they can be integrated into the um, general classroom and I'm like oh my goodness I, I haven't done anything to help them like I've tried naturally like without even um, the knowledge behind it I've tried but um, every kid is in so individually um, affected in, in so many different ways and how and the outcome that um, it's amazing. It's amazing. It, it's really difficult to be a teacher. Forget about integration of different races and ethnicity. Forget about the culture. Forget about race, like, you know, black kids, Hispanic kids, Asian kids, white kids. Forget about the disability, so many disabilities, but and, and the socioeconomic status of the kids as well and, and families. There are so many things and, and that you have to integrate into one classroom and to make the community of the classroom being... Um, friendly welcome safe safe zone and so I'm learning a lot about that but like thinking about um I, I told my professor seriously I every time when he reads a scenario on the screen and we have to think about um what kind of um presentation and what was it um presentation product so we had to um, we have to come up with a lesson and adjust it to that child that he has in the scenario. I'm like, every time he, I read a scenario, I'm like, I, I remember having a kid like that. I remember the sixth grader who was like that. And um, it's just amazing. And today I had to present about TBI, the traumatic uh, brain injury. And I learned a lot from it. Like I dug out in the textbook and online. And it was really interesting to, and it's scary too. And I um, listen on YouTube of stories of people who had children like that, or like the kid herself sharing her story. And um, then the teacher today had um, some more stories and movies. There was a child that um, it was completely fine until one day she started um, convulsing like seizures. And she started doing that, and for the past, for the next three years, she was pretty much from the time she wakes up, she has to be with a helmet. And so, uh, neuro, neuro, what do you call those people? The, the brain um, doctors, uh, neurologists. She she explained that um, it's a syndrome. What was the? It's a very rare syndrome, but um, half of your brain, um, the signals, the the electricity that is passed by the, the neurons is. Um, it's it's like bad signals so they um they don't affect that the left side but it just there for her was like well the right side of her brain and so it was sending like the wrong the bad signals and so she had seizures and things like that a few times a day multiple times a day so it was like a really miserable life and so they had this new research and um they decided to operate on her head and take that bad half of the brain and they did and um, she had to go through physical thera therapy because um, you know the the right half is for the left 
side of the body and they're, they're, so vice versa. And so through her physical therapy and um, all kinds of therapies, she gained uh, strength in her muscles and she could walk and she could smile a little bit um, less on, on the left side, but amazing, beautiful child, beautiful girl. And uh, her dream is to be a ballerina. I don't know how old is that video, probably about 10, 15 years ago. But I don't know, she's probably young, a, a woman now, but that's amazing. You have in your head only half of your brain and you're able to, capable of moving, talking, um, walking, everything, doing everything like the rest of the the humans around you. And it's really amazing. It's really amazing. I was so impressed with that. Um, but those are the sort of things I'm learning now and this class has been amazing um, so we have to present the books that we read next week and that's how I finish my last class for the semester my first semester and um, it's really exciting I, I, I feel like I have read so many books and textbooks and articles um, for the past three months that I have never read for the past 13 years since I have a kid so it's been like I'm like this sponge that just takes everything, take all the information. And and my classmates are the same because they're already teachers, like music teachers or teachers in their schools and but without license. And so um, the our instructors always say, "Man, this this group of students is like people who already had hands on on like the, 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 the you've practiced that you already know." And so when, when you share information with those kind of students and when they share back information from their experience, it's just a whole different story from, say, having students coming from finishing a bachelor's degree barely. And so I learn a lot from them um, and how they handle um, children with difficulties of either like motor, motor function or like uh, intellectual um, or emotional so it's it, it it's a life learning process and I told my professor today that the difference between me in bachelor and me now like when I was a bachelor degree student I would just do the assignments because I have to do it and I had to you know rush to work and it was more like um, socializing with your classmates and your um, you know when in school while now it's like I really enjoy it and I want to learn about it because um, I don't know because that's just how I am I I really like learning and I haven't had that opportunity for for so many years and so it feels great.